Hey, I'm Chris Dyer. Chris Dyer. I like to travel the world doing art, having fun, and meeting interesting people. I hope you enjoyed these art ventures. ventures. Hey guys, welcome back to your adventures. Right now I'm in my home studio in Montreal. Uh, I just spent a couple months not traveling. I needed to rest a little bit from all the traveling from last year, but also catch up on all the duties and responsibilities of you know what it is to make a living as an artist. Being back home is being great. Uh, it's a good time in my life. Ariani, who's a girl I went on a couple trips with, I uh, ended up moving from Florida to here to Montreal and had a nice winter and having a good spring together. <laughs> Before I decided to move to Montreal, it was a lot of, I guess, just thinking and meditation involved because I had to decide to take a pause on my current life and try something new. After I met Chris in that festival in Florida, uh, we went on a couple of trips and we got to know each other better and better at each day, really, that we knew each other. It made my decision to leave school, to move to Montreal and do art and live life with Chris easier, for sure. <laughs> so now I'm doing what I love, things are working out in the most perfect and right way and everything just feels so right and I regret nothing, so. So yeah, so in this episode, we're actually going to go back to uh, Alex and Alison's Gray's Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors, also known as Cosm. Uh, it's a community that I've been uh, visiting for the last five to six years. I've done a bunch of workshops there. I've given speeches and painted murals and contributed to the uh, Mushroom Cafe. So this year I'll be back, you know, visiting my friends and showing you a little bit more about what's happening down there in upstate New York. So yeah, hope you enjoy! So yeah, this is my fifth year here at Chapel Sacred Mirrors. I love coming here. I love Alex and Allison and all they do for this community which combines spirituality of no particular culture but also creativity and art. That's why it's easy for me to come here and just volunteer and paint them some murals and make them some creatures in the meadow and teach my workshops. It's all like a labor of love with the same intention of bringing positive spirituality and creativity into the life of so many people. Oh, it's so sweet. It's, uh, there's so many artists here. Everyone is super creative, so welcoming and just generally loving, giving people. It's such a beautiful space. This house, this property has so much love and care put into it and you can really feel it from the moment you step on the property. Well, these kind of spaces create a nexus point for people to gather. They're like a beacon of light, I think, in these changing, shifting, crazy times. And uh, when people come together here, they are reinforced in their um, conviction, I think, of 
a positive future and uh, a healing planet and camaraderie, creativity and growth through this changing. And here at Cosm, what we do is, first of all, we're, our main mission is to build a temple to house uh, lots of visionary art of Alex and Alice and Gray with the idea behind it of giving an x-ray view into the human experience. And a lot of the paintings are depicting these, you know, deeper levels of reality than what we normally perceive in the mundane realm. So it's kind of a window in to higher states of consciousness, uh, archetypes, symbolism, things that represent the beyond the physical, the more spiritual dimensions. I love Cosm so far. Everyone here has been nothing but kind, generous, and nice, and every single person you talk to, you know, they make that important eye contact, you know, they're there to listen to you and hear you and respond genuinely. So I love that, you know, that's an important thing for me. And on top of it, they have this beautiful home to stay in and everyone's doing this out of the love of their heart and stuff. So I, I like that a lot because that's how I feel about art and how we all should live anyways with everything we do. I mean, I, what I love about it is that it's kind of this meshing pool of people that are just here to be creative. Um, a lot of artists come together and celebrating like the visionary art movement. I don't know, it's just really inspiring that two artists can have this vision and um, get a collective of people to just like make it happen. And I think it's gonna be an epic pilgrimage place. Not only the museum with all the sacred art and um, like the, the mirrors and all the originals of Alex Nelson's work plus the entire visionary community of artists that are in the mix as well. So yeah, and this first picture that I'm showing you, you can clearly see that skateboarding is an art, it's a beautiful thing. Christian Hosso is a beautiful man, and uh, he's just tweaking that air, and you're seeing a graphic with him on his board tweaking an air. So it's just to show that a lot of the um, skateboard graphics are very present when you see skateboard photography. Usually the small is when I want to capture an idea, and all the sketches in these small books suck so hard because it's just like a big squiggle like, oh, I want a dude holding a planet and kicking a guy's face, whatever. And it looks like shit, but then when I take it to the bigger one where it's a little bit more space or detail, then I'll do the same thing, but I'll develop it more. And usually that's the one that then will go over to the canvas. Once again, we can see the examples here of, you know, reds versus greens, but then like complementaries. This, this painting was actually really difficult because there was just so much happening that I had to really strategize how to make the colors interplay in one character, but still interplay with the next character and not seem like they're all melting together to a blob of color. That could very easily happen. I want somebody to see my painting from far away and still be like, oh, it's a boat with different characters, even though I just see general shapes and colors. We are spiritual artists, and that's awesome. That's one more power that we have on top of the normal artists, because we see the world from the place of soul, you know? We, we're, we're transcendent from this lifetime even. We see ourselves as multi-lifetime, eternal drops of God in a way. Like, I'm God experiencing the human experience, so I got power. That's an empowered point of view to start from everything. So I'm here for the Chris Sire art workshop and uh, I grew up as a skateboarder and I never really knew much about the history of skateboard art but I love the artwork on the boards. That's probably some of my earliest influence of being interested in artwork. 
So Chris taught us about the whole history of the origins of skateboarding and where, how skateboard already evolved. And um, he showed us his technique and his ideas on composition and style and art process. And it was a great opportunity to learn from a very accomplished and successful artist. a ton a lot about just new techniques for sure and how to kind of transform my style a bit more and kind of push things in new directions and a lot about the business end of things definitely sitting through three hours learning about business and not falling asleep was pretty sweet so yeah just everything social and like the political aspect of art the main thing I would say is you kind of learn a basis of Chris's process in addition to um, kind of the, the business aspect because there's a big element I feel like of pushing you just how to be the best artist you can be and how to really make it like it's kind of seen as a as something that's impossible to do to be an artist and survive that way in this world and it's kind of empowerment as how to be the best artist you can be and then how to take that and then how to live from it. So we're down here at the middle. I'm gonna do a little demonstration and stuff and you guys can like also paint. Basically, the only way to get good at the medium of spray painting is by doing it over and over and over again because it's all about muscle memory. It's about you doing something enough with this little finger that's so subtle, you know, and you know that everything you're doing with spray painting is so subtle that it's all about teaching your brain like what all these subtle movements of your hand and stuff will do to the painting you're about to do with this can that shoots out paint really fast so it's like something that takes pretty much years and you gotta do it like quite a bit I'm so excited to see Chris Dyer's work developing in this section of the Wisdom Trail. As you come down the Wisdom Trail toward the meadow, you see these magnificent mega works of art that Chris develops uh, with his students, in front of his students. Uh, such a great example of monumental art that he leaves here at Cosm, and uh, every year we get a few more. So. Here we have, you know, beautiful totem projects and archetypes and fierce guardians. And I love the power and confidence in the work. You should look at Chris's work. And he's working on it. He's expanding his piece in the cafe. It's gorgeous. And he has actually another piece in the cafe. It's, you have to find it. It's on Burgundy Viscasi's landscape. He, he, he added a... A gnome. Well, we love gnomes. You know, he came to the mushroom cafe. He said, "I don't see any eating of mushrooms in this entire cafe. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, mushroom, but no one's eating it." <laughs> you know. And her landscape was so empty. It's like, it was man, where's the people at? Yeah, it needed you. It totally needed you. Totally needed you. I want totally next year. Next year, I want to add more creatures to that side. Now that the, the that upper door thing is a little bit like getting gnarly to paint it, like I'm he had a neck pillow. I'm telling you, keep going. We gotta keep going. Wow, wow. 
Well, thank you, Chris, for adding your magic. Yeah, no problem. And it's so unique, Chris. I have to say that. There's nobody in the visionary art tradition that's making work that looks like yours. Thank Sometimes you. you see people's work that looks similar, but yours is really your own. I'm Never mistaken for anyone else. Thank and you so much. It's an honor. Always a positive and radiant, effulgent kind of and creature, you know, and just like... Really looks like, yeah, you want to hang out with them. I know. I know. Do you ever think this world is yours? We're living in a creation. We are a creation. We don't need a mythology to recognize that this is a miraculous unfolding of creator or universal creativity if you don't want to give it a personality, but an infinite oneness that pervades us and is the wellspring of our being and the true <coughs> God self that we're known for in this brief encounter with Earth <laughs> that we all have the privilege of having. This is an aesthetic miracle. So I started doing positive spiritual art. And then back in 2004, I moved in with a new roommate and she had the Sacred Mirrors book. And I saw it and I was like, wow, this shit's crazy. It's so good. But this guy's kind of doing what I want to do, but like way, 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 way better. Like, I want to do this like super cool spiritual thing. This, this guy's like the king. Like he, he done all the cool thing. It's like, it's like the Beatles happen and all the artists are like, man, Beatles did all the good songs. You know? So we make art at the same time as we meditate. And we just see whether we can actually you know, get a flow of creative vision. Open all my eyes. Reveal the light of truth. Let original beauty guide my every stroke. Universal creativity flow through me, from my heart, through my mind, to my hand. Infuse my work with spirit to feed hungry souls. Pantheon is a word meaning the God within, and uh, that's the name that Alex gave to the building, and we've been working on it for two and a half years. It's a, a exhibition hall for visionary art, not just Alex and Allison's, but also um, other artists from the visionary art world. Um, and uh, it's really a temple of love. If you look at uh, the iconography and the symbolism in Alex's work, it's usually about love, family, eco-consciousness. So I feel like it's a temple dedicated to those ideals and uh, to uh, evolution and artistic creative pursuit.
So, Alex, what have you done there? Is that supposed to be me? <laughs> I'm, I'm not that pretty. <laughs> uh, well, hey, you're a lot more amazing than I could ever do in a few little uh, uh, strokes of the pen. But I really appreciate your patience and uh, uh, willingness to sit there for a little while. I, I love your hair, man. It's uh, pretty amazing. You're pretty brave for trying to tackle it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this beautiful episode. Please join us in the next one when Ariane and me will be traveling through the awesome country of Brazil. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, please click like and also subscribe so you can catch my future episodes. Have a good one. Peace.